Yeah, this is like uh, try number six or something here. So what we're going to talk about is uh, basically using one of these IoT devices. Amazon has this really cool tiny kit and it's 50 bucks. I don't know. If, yeah, it's kind of worth it, actually. It's got a bunch of parts in it. It's got a touch screen, an LED, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and a secure enclave, at least a semi-secure enclave in it that you can use for talking IoT. So basically what we're going to do here is uh, the tutorials for this uh, basically take your IoT device and you end up registering it with uh, the Azure, I'm sorry, the AWS IoT core, and you end up communicating with it. And then the demo, basically what happens is there's two-way communication to this device. In one case, the device on a regular basis sends a heartbeat, basically, via MQTT to the IoT core, and then you can view it in the core uh, client. Or basically, it's the portal, their web portal. You can also use a test client to generate messages that are injected into IoT core and that transmit across MQTT. The IoT device will pull and pick that up. And so basically, in a real app, you'd have some app that does some feedback loop or goes off and does other things. But in this case, we have a viewer uh, for this, and then we have a test client that sends messages back, and we can do the blink and lights thing on this piece. So that's it's really kind of cool. And I'm really not going to talk about any stuff. I'm just going to talk really about the process for this. So basically, if you want to do this thing for this blinky IoT, kind of what are the steps for that? You got to set up the environment. And that includes making sure you got the right device driver and using the, in this case, the tutorial actually uses platform.io. And this takes a while to build, but it's kind of cool. Uh, and then basically what you got to do after you do this is you have to set up your AWS credentials. So we're going to have this IoT device talk into Azure and we're going to have it program some stuff through the Azure API with our credentials. So we set up the development environment, and then we set up our AWS environment in the development environment. And then basically the next set of the process is each one of these devices has a secure, has a certificate in it. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to package up that certificate and go through all these steps. It's kind of crazy, but it's part, a lot of it's automated. And we're going to up register basically this device's certificate um, up in AWS, and that'll give us an MQTT tied to this thing, right? Or basically we're registered with AWS IoT. And then we can get an AWS IoT endpoint that represents this device. Um, and then on the device itself, so we did all that in Amazon, in uh, AWS. Man. And um, the, the next thing we're going to do is we actually got to configure the device. So this configured, we, we configured our de developer station. Then we configured IoT, uh, AWS IoT. And then we have to configure the device. So in my, this case, one of these things is really on a Wi-Fi connection. Um, we you kind of wish you could do wired, but you really don't need it for the demo piece of this. And so we're going to configure basically the build in the dev environment so that we can configure the Wi-Fi connection, and we're going to insert or build into the device the AWS IoT endpoint. So this thing is going to be coded to the AWS environment. And anybody takes this thing when it gets plugged in, it's basically going to plug into that environment. If you want to plug into a different environment, you got to go re rebuild the software with the right certs on it, right configuration. It. And then we build the code and we download the firmware. And in that case, like I said, we're going to end up with one of these devices that's basically, in this case, uh, for the demo, we hardwired the Wi-Fi. You'd probably do it differently. Uh, you do a config thing um, in production for high volume. But in this case, and then we're going to embed the IoT endpoint for this thing in this. Um, and because we have our cert registered, whenever we connect with that endpoint, we present our cert, it'll know um, where, it, it'll know who we are, right? And then for this Blinky specific examples, there's, remember I said there's two ways, right? One is um, we can subscribe to the device messages. So like the device can send on a regular basis, either a heartbeat or a temperature or some other thing. Basically, the way that you do this in the tutorial is you go to the portal and you subscribe for device messages. And what happens is this when you plug this device in, it's going to join its local Wi-Fi and it's going to send regular messages over MQTT to the IoT, AWS IoT environment. And then you're going to use the portal basically to view those messages as they come in by reading them off of the topics, right? And then the other part is because we had the two-directional thing, right? Um, 
you can actually do a test client that will inject messages into AWS IoT Core, and that'll generate an MQTT message that the device can then pick up and read. And in this case, if we put numbers or whatever in this thing, basically we're gonna flash some lights on the device. So what it does is it lets us have a remote device talk with AWS um, IoT. And then in our case, instead of writing an app, we use the test client and we use the topic viewer. Uh, instead, in your app, you would actually connect an app between those things, and that would let you uh, build something that actually talks to this. And I'll, I might go and look at one of the other demos to see if we can find that. There's a couple of them floating around where you can hook up to like uh, Alexa and all that kind of stuff. So that's really what the app does. They don't really, I wish they had this chart or a prettier one in the tutorial, uh, but you know, so here's, this is what you got. So. I don't know why I call this alternatives. Basically, there's some links out there. If you want to learn about this device, uh, it's got this secure element in it. Uh, this is actually the Amazon purchase page. And then there's the tutorials and there's basically um, this Amazon tutorial and uh, there's the AWS samples, right, that are out there. But the the samples that they actually really use in one of the tutorial I ran were actually the M5 stack examples. So the company that makes the device um, they put out a GitHub repo that's got like the blinky one in it, and that's the one I use. Uh, the only other thing I would say is there's an entire stack family of these devices. The The thing that seems to be the most unique about this AWS device is this secure element um, that lets you have a certificate repo, right? And um, I don't know if you could bake that in, but it's probably more secure to have the soft, the hardware one. Well, I guess if somebody gets access to the device. To uh, there's a bunch of other devices out there that you could use. Um, and then the only other thing I would say is uh, the M5 stack people. You can see some of these in the M5 stack. The M5 stack people have their own AWS core tutorial, uh, M5 stack core tutorials for AWS. So I think this thing is really kind of cool and uh, it's not very expensive. You might even be able to find one on discount somewhere. It kind of cracks me up. They go for more than list price on eBay, or maybe this is the discounted price. Um, it's a pretty cool device, and there aren't many devices that have a touchscreen, capacitive buttons, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Uh, it supports Grove connectors, and um, it's got a secure enclave kind of thing or secure cert storage area and a battery, uh, all for 50 bucks. It's kind of cool, and it's pretty powerful. It's an ESP32, so you can do a lot of stuff with it. It's a tiny Linux sort of uh, size machine. You can see that here because we got 16 megabytes. And it's the 10S. Oh, it's got a bunch of stuff. Have a great time. You should try this thing out.